Okay, so let's start. Welcome everyone to the Schubert seminar. Uh, today we're happy to have Nicola Peron from Ecole Polytechnic uh, telling us about the positivity of Grassmannian quantum K theory. Uh, please go ahead, Nicola. So thanks, Leonardo. Thanks to the organizers for the invitation. So I'm happy to be uh, in this Schubert seminar. So I will report on uh, on joint work with two organizers of the seminar. So uh, maybe this is a reason for my invitation. I don't know. <laughs> so and uh, and also with uh, Pierre Manuel Chaput, who is in in Nancy. So I'm going to focus on Grassmannians, but uh, this applies to some other cases. I will explain this. So, okay, let's see. Yes, so I, I will start with the basic uh, Schubert calculus for at least for uh, illustrate the fact that this is a Schubert seminar. And then I will focus on, uh, so I will, Schubert calculus will be, will be a bit uh, large. So I will include quantum cohomology in Schubert calculus, and then I will focus on quantum K theory then state the results and may, maybe I don't know exactly give ideas of proof. I don't know where I can uh, where I can go. Okay, so I start with uh, really basics. So I was told to to start with basics. So let's see. So the main character is a is a rational projective homogeneous space. So a quotient of a reductive group by a parabolic subgroup. Okay, so the uh, you have you have the usual uh, the usual uh, characters in this uh, in this topic where you fix a parabolic subgroup okay then you fix a Borel subgroup inside your parabolic subgroup and then you fix a maximal torus inside this uh, Borel subgroup and you can also look at the opposite Borel subgroup which is a unique Borel subgroup so that the intersection of uh, your Borel with the opposite is the maximal torus and uh, with uh, these subgroups, you can you can produce lots of uh, combinatorial gadgets. I I'm going to recall, and that uh, most of you already know. Okay, so the basic example is uh, is to to look at GLN, and then you have uh, the Borel subgroup, which is given, for example, by upper triangular matrices, the maximal torus by diagonal matrices, and the opposite subgroup will be given by lower um, triangular matrices. And once you have uh, such a Borel subgroup or opposite Borel subgroup, you can look at the Breuer decomposition, which is simply the decomposition in terms of P orbits or the decomposition in terms of P minus orbits. These two are conjugate, so somewhere they are, they are the same up to conjugation. And you get just a disjoint union of finitely many P orbits. So you have only finitely many, and they are indexed by some subset, some nice subset of uh, the Weyl group. Okay, so I guess I guess this is this is well known to everyone. Okay, once you have uh, all these gadgets, uh, well, you you can do a bit of geometry and go to uh, to cohomology. So you you take the closure of the B orbits. These are the Schubert varieties. If you take the closure of the opposite orbits, then you get the opposite Schubert variety. So they have nice properties. For example, the dimension of the Schubert variety is the length of the corresponding by group element. And this is also the co-dimension of the opposite Schubert variety. Okay, so this is very classical. And the main point in, in looking at Schubert varieties and opposite Schubert varieties is not only on, on co-dimension and nice combinatorics, the fact that uh, these are like canonical choices of sub-varieties in general position. So this is something then something very convenient because you have like these varieties which are almost fixed, but still they like represent something which are in general position. And therefore any intersection theory will be very nice using these sub varieties. Okay, so I will I will uh, I will present several avatars of uh, of intersection so cohomology. I will not talk about uh, equivalent cohomology, but they are, they are also very convenient for equivalent cohomology, but okay. So let's start with the basics, uh, cohomology. So once you have these varieties, which are uh, uh, proper sub varieties in, uh, in uh, the homogeneous space, you can look at their Schubert classes, which are simply the cohomology classes and the Schubert classes form basis and they actually form dual basis for the cohomology. 
So, um, so actually these two bases, that's what I'm explaining uh, right after, is that these two bases are actually the same. It's just that uh, you have a reparameterization of, uh, of the indexes. So you can uh, just uh, do some bijection on indexes to get uh, the classes of Schubert varieties and then the classes of opposite Schubert varieties. Okay, and uh, and they have uh, they are in uh, in duality for for intersection, so this is called Poincaré duality. And uh, as as is explained uh, below, if you look at the opposite Schubert variety, actually the opposite Schubert variety is nothing else than the translate of a Schubert variety for of the dual Schubert variety. And and this W zero somehow explain the fact that they are in general position, so you have to translate by the general element. Okay, so this uh, this is classical Schubert calculus, and using this, you can um, compute lots of things on uh, cohomology and intersection products. So you can define, especially uh, at least uh, compute the cup product in terms of these Schubert classes. So here I express the cup product in terms of opposite Schubert classes, but as we have seen, this is uh, the same as with Schubert classes. It's just better for, for the degree um, reasons. Okay, so if you multiply any two Schubert uh, classes, you get uh, an expression in terms of Schubert classes because these are uh, this form a basis, and you can expand them in with with coefficients. And these coefficients are actually solution of enumerative uh, geometric enumerative problems. So they count the number of intersection points of the translate of uh, three Schubert varieties in general position. So you, you pick your first opposite Schubert variety, you pick a general translate of the second opposite Schubert variety. And then for the last one, because you have Poincaré duality, you have to take a general translate of the dual class of, uh, of uh, the Schubert variety. <clears throat> okay, so, so in particular, what you get is that uh, these numbers are always non-negative integers. So, so a, a very classical problem and difficult problem, and and some people in the audience claim that this is like uh, uh, non really uh, possible to have a nice expression to this problem is to give a, a combinatorial enumerative formula for these now uh, these uh, intersection numbers. So in general, yeah, I'm not only uh, restricting to the case of Grassmannians for which we have nice solutions for these numbers. Okay, so this was uh, Schubert calculus, classical Schubert calculus, and now um, I want to, to go into some avatars of Schubert calculus. So I go in two directions, there will be two directions. There's a quantum direction, which I'm going to talk right now. And then there is a K-theory direction I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about a bit later on. Okay, so, so uh, to do quantum cohomology, what you do is instead of doing intersection on the variety, you do intersection on families of curves. So the moduli space of, of curves. Or if you want to, to see this as an enumerative problem, you, you are not counting points on the variety anymore, but you are counting rational curves joining points in the variety. Okay, so you fix uh, an effective uh, curve class D you can think about uh, D as a degree. Uh, as soon as we go to Grassmannian, this will just be a degree, since the Picard group of the Grassmannian is Z. Okay, and uh, you look at the moduli space of uh, stable maps. So this Konsevich moduli space of stable maps. So as uh, as set, it's just uh, the set of all morphisms from a uh, uh, curve of sinus zero, which is only which has only um, nodes as singularities. So it's a, just a tree of P1s with uh, some Mach points, P1 to Pn, which are just smooth Mach points and the morphism from C to X. And the only thing you want to, to fix is uh, the class, the cohomology class of the push forward of your of your curve, which should be D. Okay, so this represents the curve. Uh, you can you can you can think of the, the concept moduli spaces as a family of of spaces are a very big space with lots of uh, irreducible components. Okay, so in the case of uh, okay, and you have and you have uh, you need to to ask that f satisfies the stability condition. So the stability condition is is simply that there is no well, there are finitely many automorphisms for your map, or if you want for rational 
for for stable maps of genus zero. This is just that when some irreducible component of C uh, is contracted by the map F, then there must be at least three map points or three or three uh, singular points of the curve. Okay. So, so this moduli space is very nice for several reasons. So the first reason is that there are lots and lots of maps from this moduli space to other uh, spaces. So the, at least there will be there will be three that I will I will really need, which are, well more than three because I have n points. But the, the evaluation maps. So each time you have a, if each time you you choose a fixed point, then you can map the the stable map to its value at that fixed point. So you get lots of map to X. Okay, so this will be used to, to pull back uh, classes from X to the moduli space. Um, you also have lots of uh, sub varieties in this moduli space, which are very nice, which are given by curves, which have reduced uh, source. I will talk about them uh, a bit later on. And for X, uh, so this is defined for any projective, uh, smooth projective variety or any, even probably any variety, but, but for, for X uh, rational homogeneous space, this space is, is very nice, this space of stable maps. So at least for us, it is, it is irreducible. It is even rational and it has nice singularities. So it has rational singularities. Actually it has, it has uh, quotient singularities. So this this is almost a, a smooth a smooth variety and rational so very very uh, very very positive uh, well lots of geometry in, in it okay so we want to use this moduli space to define a new product which is a deformation of the uh, cohomology product so first you well, because it's a deformation, you need to, to extend a bit the space on which you're going to, to do the product. So the space is just you take you take the cohomology of uh, of the variety and you tensor it with some um, some okay, let's say some uh, Laurent series uh, or, or a power series of uh, the integers. Actually, we don't really need the power series here. We we will only need the polynomials. But uh, for the moment, let's let's just define it this way. So here yeah, I assume Picard rank uh, one, but it's not really important. You can you can view Q as a, as a several variables, and then and then the definition works for for any um, uh, homogeneous rational projective space. Okay, so this is just a space. It's just a tensor product, and you define the you define a product on this on this vector space or on this Z module. Uh, as follows, so it's going to be a deformation of the classical cohomology product. So you you define you define the product on 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 a basis. So you choose two Schubert bases, which are here opposite Schubert bases, and you pull them back to the moduli space using the evaluation maps. Okay, you multiply these two bases on the moduli space, and then you push forward. Okay, when you do that, obviously this depends on the moduli space you chose. So uh, what you do is you, you choose all the possible moduli spaces. So you, you are summing over all the effective classes of curves. So all these D. And uh, to remember the fact that you are summing on all these Ds, you add this uh, quantum parameter, which depends on D. So all these uh, quantum parameters uh, will depend on the effective class. So if you have, uh, if you have pick a rank one, you just have one variable. If you have higher pick a rank, you have more variables and then you decompose the power in terms of, of these uh, different uh, generators of a group. Okay, so this is the product. And uh, so one of the main results of the theory is the fact that this product is, uh, is very nice. So especially it is associative because this is absolutely not obvious from this definition. And then the fact that it's commutative and graded is, is, is not difficult. You need to, to give uh, the right grading to, to the quantum parameter. But then the commutativity just follows from the commutativity of the of the cup product on the moduli space. Okay, so this is this is quantum cohomology, and uh, it's easy to see that this quantum cohomology, the deformation of cohomology, because when you take the moduli space of curves of degree zero, this is just the space X itself, and these evaluation maps are just identity maps, and so what you get is just a cup product that you push forward. So it's just a cup product. Uh, without without curves, so you are you are getting back the cup product for Q equals zero, 
and it is a deformation of the of the the cohomology. Uh, okay, so this is a remark on the fact that you don't really need to to have power series here. So if you have a finite variety, the the dimension of the Mirdili space is going to be uh, is going to be linear on the degree. So so if you if you take a degree large enough. Then the moduli space is so big that uh, the the inter the cup product uh, is of uh, too large dimension, and then the push forward will be of a variety of dimensions strictly bigger than the variety x. So the push forward in cohomology is going to vanish, and therefore the, the term will be zero for d large enough. Okay, for non final varieties, you you need to to do to be more careful on on convergence. Okay, so again, when you you have this quantum cohomology, you can look at the at the structure constant of the product, and this structure constant of the product have very nice enumerative geometric properties. So if you if you look at degree zero, then you get back uh, cohomology, so you get back the numbers we were talking before, and which are counting points in intersection points of uh, three Schubert varieties. And if you go in higher degrees, and what's happening is that uh, the same kind of techniques using Kleinman's transversality imply that uh, these numbers uh, are actually just counting the uh, a number of rational curve having geometric properties. Okay, so what what do you have? You look at the the, the set. Uh, just you can you can use this just as a set. The set of all maps from you can even assume that the source of the map is a, is irreducible. So the, the set of all maps from P1 to your variety, such that the first mark point, which will be zero in P1, is mapped in a given opposite Schubert variety. The second mark point, which you choose to be one, is mapped to a general translate of the second Schubert variety. And then the last mark point, you map it to the again the uh, point carrier dual of um, of the third Schubert variety. Okay, so you have uh, this set of, just a set of maps. And if this set is infinite, then actually because you are doing push forward in cohomology, you just get that this coefficient is zero. And if it's not uh, infinite, then uh, the number of maps is exactly the coefficient you're looking for. So, so these coefficients are really enumerative, they're really counting curves. And in particular, these coefficients have to be non-negative integers. Okay, so again, you get you get you get non-negativity or positivity in quantum cohomology. Okay, so I, I uh, prepared a small example. So this is a three-dimensional quadric. Okay, so this is the homogeneous space for the symplectic group or for the orthogonal group, depending the one you prefer. <clears throat> okay, and the Schubert varieties in the, in the symplectic in 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 the three-dimensional quadric are just given by, uh, okay, the, the whole variety X itself, then uh, in in minimal dimension, you have just a point. Then in four dimension one, you have the orthogonal of that point. So the orthogonal of that point, this is, for example, the set of all lines passing through that point. Or if you want, it is also the orthogonal of that point. Or if you want to view this geometrically, uh, it is a tangent space passing through the, at that point of the three-dimensional quadric. So it's a two-dimensional cone over a, a conic. Okay, so this is, a, again, a Schubert variety. And the last one is just a line, which is, for example, passing through the point X. So th there are just four Schubert varieties in this situation. Very simple. And uh, and if you want to, so I, 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 I'm, I'm going to do two basic computation in quantum cohomology and in cohomology. So the first one is just you take two hyperplane sections in your in your quadric, so two two dimensional quadrics. Um, and if you do this, you have you are in dimension three, you intersect with two hyperplanes, so you get uh, a, a conic in dimension one. Okay, so this conic in dimension one in cohomology, this is just twice a line. So that's what you get here. And I'm claiming that there is nothing in quantum cohomology more than in cohomology, so there are no Q terms. And this is because if you take a general point in the quadric, and you look, for example, if you start to look for for if you if you are counting curves, you start to count lines. And if you pick a general point in the quadric, and you count how many lines 
are passing through this point and meet the two hyperplanes, then actually any line passing through the point are going to meet the two hyperplanes, whatever the hyperplanes are, just because it's called dimension one. Okay, so the, the, the number of such lines is this the number of lines passing through a point, but the number of lines passing through a point, as, as I was saying, this is exactly a one dimensional variety because it's given by the, the ruling of the, the cone, the quadratic cone, which is a tangent space to the point in the quadratic. So there are infinitely many such lines. So there are always infinitely many uh, lines or curve of degree D passing through these two hyperplanes and something. And therefore all the quantum parameters, all the, all the quantum cohomology product will be zero. So there is nothing really interesting in this situation. But if you go in dimension one more, then you look at a line and an hyperplane in that quadratic then, then uh, okay, the intersection is very easy. It's just intersection of an hyperplane and a line. This is one point. So, so this is a cohomology class, a cohomology product. But if you look for lines passing through a general point, no. The lines passing through a general point, they are just, they just cover the uh, orthogonal of that point. The orthogonal of that point is going to meet the line you chose in exactly one point. So this fix a line, and this line is going to meet the hyperplane in one more point. So there's exactly one line which meets a general point, the line, and the hyperplane. So that's the coefficient one which appears here. And since you, you have to take the Poincaré dual, the dual to the point is uh, is a unit, and you get this uh, quantum parameter. So this is. This is the way you, you can do it. This is just doing geometry and counting. So of course, when you go to higher dimension and more complicated varieties, this is more, more difficult. But in principle, you can just count rational curves. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, okay, I go on with uh, quantum case theory. I don't know when I can do a break. So I could do a break now. Or I go on with the uh, definition and result of quantum K theory, and then I do the break before results and idea of proof. We, we can do a break now. It's almost half essentially. So let, let's have five minutes break okay. now. Let's have a break now. <laughs>